another thing to actually do it. To actually practice your belief. In other words, it's one thing to say you have faith. And it's another thing to live that faith out loud. Now you would think that by this time the Israelites, they would have an attitude of gratitude toward God and toward Moses and Aaron, their leaders. But as we see in this passage of Scripture, we have to think twice, don't we? We have to think again. You see, the Israelites, they were hungry. And in their hunger, they needed food. But in this hunger and in this need for food, they grumbled. See, instead of praying and believing in the God who had been there with them and was still with them, in the God who had given to them and was still giving to them, they grumbled. I love what Max Licata says, the pastor and writer, Max Licata, he says this. He says, God's blessings are dispensed according to the riches of His grace, not according to the depth of our faith. Wow. See, if it was according to the depth of the Israelites' faith, they would have died right here in the desert of sin. They would have died in the desert. But God, see, had a plan for them. God had a purpose for them. And listen to me. We sang it in the song just a few moments ago. God was faithful to them. I love, see, even in our unfaithfulness, even in our lack of belief, God will remain faithful. God's purposes and plans and intentions cannot be thwarted by man. We sang that too, didn't we? See, God was going to rain down bread from heaven for Israel. God is faithful. Even when His children are not. And many times what happens is when we act out of disobedience to God's commands, we fail to enjoy His full and faithful provisions. You know what that means? That means instead of living the best life that God has already planned for you and given you, you're living a partial life. You think you got it good if you only knew what you could have. That's a message for me today. Oh, Jeff, you think you're living it good? But you could have so much better if you were faithful, if you were obedient to my instructions, if you were actually walking in the way instead of talking in the way. And Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. We don't need the miracles. We need the miracle giver. We don't need the provisions. We need the provider. So what must we do? What do we do, God? We trust Him. We believe in Him. And when we do, God says you will have the bread of life. The bread of life. You will have full and eternal life. Later on in John chapter 10, He tells them, I have come so that you may have life. Not just life, but full life. See, what God did for Moses, what God did for the children of Israel in the desert, it was a clear picture of what God was going to do through Jesus Christ for the entire world. What God did in that moment in the desert for Israel was a clear picture of what God was going to do throughout eternity. Jesus is the bread of life. I want